Hello everybody, welcome back to another video, and today we are back on the Haystech survival server for our main storage project. You can take a look around me, you can see that it's all finished. It has been a long, very, very long month and a half, and it's done. So, yeah, let's, um, let's go for a little tour of this place. Um, so once we come through this nether portal here, this is the, the main nether portal, um, you walk into here, we have our restock station over here. Uh, these item frames where um, someone coded them in, I guess, or put in a command to get them. Um, just some sorts of stuff in here, uh, end portal frames, fire resistant potions, all the flight duration rockets, some food, some various stuff. Um, that's really nice. We have a little sleeping room here for a player to sleep. Uh, this is just a chest of all the elite blocks we have. As of right now. Um, we have our own stackable sorter here. All of our stuff sorting out. Kind of see all the stuff getting sorted away. Here we have our uh, multi item sorter where you can see the uh, plethora of items that we have we've gathered over the little bit of playing. Um, Actually, do we have any coils? No, we don't. Um, okay, over here we have the input. This is the main input. Uh, version 17 of mine, I think. 18, 19, I'm not sure. It was actually greatly modified because uh, we tested the survival, and this is kind of like the best I could get out of it, essentially. Um, everything has different switches. I'll go over this uh, later in the video, but I just want to show off kind of the layout. Here we have a manual crafter. Put in boxes here. Press the note block when dispense the box, same thing here, just empty shulker boxes, I believe this is a new one, I think it's like 18 game takes, it's really really nice. Um, <clears throat> uh, I think I used it to craft like a couple gold blocks, but yeah, besides that, not really. Uh, this is our uh, furnace rake, uh, I forget who this is designed by, but it's pretty nice, pretty tiny too, um, relatively fast, I think it's like 48k an hour. 46, I don't know. Uh, here we have peripherals. Uh, this was designed by Brandon, actually. This is uh, his design. Uh, actually, I got the anvil thing here. Just the layout of this was from Brandon, so appreciative on that. Got the jeep box on the floor, crafting table, all the essential stuff. Um, we don't have a brewing system. This is really our only brewing stand in the entire thing, besides the one in the instagles or whatever there. Which is kind of comical, um, but whatever. Uh, here we have an anvil. Use the anvil. It actually is really cool. It is. It does, it's not observerless, but it does have. I mean, it's relatively hidden if you look at it. But basically, it just pulls an anvil down from the stack. You can see no one's used this anvil like at all. But it just gets sent on the way over here. I'll show this here. Like this just in here. It's down here. You see the anvil that's right there. Get shot up. And we get the little ding, and then anvil's back, and we can see this happening from here too. Pretty fast. Yep. Uh, over here we have uh, Crafter by Glotz. It's pretty nice. It has, um, you can craft a shit ton of stuff in here. Basically you just chuck items in the floor here in the barrels, in the grid, crafting grid. Press unlock, turn it on, stand here, craft. Put it in the shulker box, craft, put it in the shulker box, craft, put it in the shulker box, shulker, er, shulker box breaks, and you can either send it to over here, which is the, that was poorly designed, uh, that was also poorly designed, uh, the storage for the items that you craft, or you can switch that, and that switches it to go to the bulk here, um, right now I think it's switched on, I'm not too sure, oh yeah, no, when you turn that, it just, it doesn't do anything? Ah, uh, yes, because we have very dumb people on this server. Wow, that is really fucking stupid, holy shit. Okay, well, that's, you know what, I didn't do that, so, we're, that's fine. Um, in the middle here we have our end portal frames, uh, the end portal frame, or sorry, end portals, uh, end portal frames weren't, Legitimately in survival with the falling block, it's just creative because other servers have it, it makes the gameplay more enjoyable, and I just think it's 
overall more fun to have stuff like this play around. And we're not using it in too OP of ways right here. If you saw my Concrete Factory video, yeah, maybe we're using it in a little bit of an OP way, but I think that's still uh, kind of fun. Um, that Here we have our kind of stuff that comes out of the storage. So we have our unsorted chest. Overflow. Nothing in overflow yet. And empty boxes from the uh, unloading array. Here we have just like idea board, project board, whatever. There's a bunch of coal in here for some reason. Okay. Um, that would be map art, but we don't have any right now. Here we have our big bulk. So this is a box sorter designed by, I think, Pyra. Um, it's pretty nice. Fully hopper locked, obviously. Um, really nice, actually. Initial box placement. Boxes stay here. Very, very sexy. Um, we get full boxes of stuff from here, from the loaders on the bottom here, which is pretty nice. Very nice, sorry. Um, all sorts of stuff in here we have. Uh, basically everything for the big farms that we need. We actually are going to be doubling the size of this hall soon. I have it all tiled up. I just need to do an assignment again for this little bit of it. Because some of the item assignment right here, or right now, uh, kind of interacts with this hall and those two halls, which I'll show in a minute. But uh, Here's our eight items per slice chest hall. Pretty self-explanatory. It's an eight item per slice chest hall. Um, I mean, you can look around. I don't know how much stuff there is. Not that much, apparently. Um, we got, we I got silk touch budding amethyst in this area now too, so that's pretty cool. Um, lots of ores. All the glass types: wool, terracotta, dyes. All the wood type types, and. It's, just a very basic item layout. It was designed in like a day, so don't yell at me. This is my accessible bulk uh, system. That's not the best. I was going to improve it, but then we already started building it on the SMP, so I just said, fuck it. And yeah, now we're here. Um, so this is the accessible bulk order. Right now, there's nothing in this half that I don't think, besides like concrete. I mean, obviously, if you check up here, I'm sure there's some wood, but. Besides that, I don't think there's anything else. Uh, it's pretty nice. Very nice slice, actually. And we just have the same thing over here. Just more variation between items. This is, I think, maybe the same... Oh, no, this was the one I was going to use for the ultimate main storage. And then we didn't end up at all using that, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah. So that's all the item layout. Uh, I guess I can kind of start explaining how this input works. I did have a video on this input, but some things have changed around a little bit and just tweaked. So I want to go over that. So here we have our main input. You can chuck items, shulker boxes, and whatever here. Items will get sent uh, down into a shulker box loader. And they'll also be like sorted out from unstackables and stackables. So unstackables go directly to unstackable sorting, which is really cool. Um, Shulkers, you can just throw loose items in here, like that stuff, and it'll go through the storage. Actually, I probably sh definitely should not put that in there, because that will just basically shit over the first item to unload her, especially with that many of them. Um, but yeah, those do not go in storage at all. Um, break box, that just breaks box, breaks the box, there's anything in there. We have our buffer indicator, so each uh, light equals one chest. Our toggle level, uh, our toggle lever, sorry, I'm yelling like hell, uh, <laughs> on is whenever you put item boxes into here, it's going to take those boxes regardless of their fill level, as long as they're not completely empty, and it sends them over to the big bulk, and if it's off, it'll send anything you put into this chest, um, there are shark boxes, that is, to the buffer up there, which is pretty nice. Uh, multi item sorter input, pretty generic, just put shulkers, items, whatever in here. And they'll all just get sent to the multi item sorter at hopper speed, whatever. Um, this lets you know if hoppers are unlocked, so you can just, if anything's unlocked, that'll be on. That's the big system indicator, status indicator, whatever. So those three lights are on whenever chunk loading is on or anything's active. 
There's like little restocks for the shulker bucks and stuff for the dispensers in there. Um, this light here lets you know when the unloader has received the very first batch of items. It's kind of unnecessary. Sorry, it's really unnecessary, but it's kind of cool to have. It just pings a little notebook, I think, and just lets you know when it starts. Uh, and then that's on when the unloader ray is on. Here, you can choose what it sorts to, so bulk, sort to loader, sort to, mu sort to multi unloader. Basically, if you turn these off, it's just going to go ahead and lock these hoppers here completely forever. Even if this here, this system detects that its un items are going through, it's going to keep them locked. And with the multi item sorter, I believe, yeah, just closes the trapdoor and moves away a nice block. So, opposed for the items that don't go into the chest halls. They could either go to the multi item sorter or they could go down and just directly to overflow. And these lights here tell you what's active. So, if multi, multi item sorter is on, that'll turn on. And if the bulk, um, if the bulk loaders are active, actually, that's not the bulk loaders, that is actually the bulk uh, sorters. I don't know why that says loaders, but whatever. Uh, that's what that does. In here you have a little control room, so here we have uh, emergency hopper locking, so basically whenever that's on, everything in here, in this four uh, storage halls, will be will remain completely locked, and even if items go through, they will not unlock. Besides the bulk, that is, because the bulk is an exception. Um, but yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, to unpause, or uh, here, to pause the unloader, you just press that button, pause the unloader, and it's pretty smart. It will basically turn on just this light when it's completely paused because it does take a little bit of time for it to completely pause because there's just like a little bit of static timing that it has to do. It's, it's annoying and weird, but whatever. Um, and then you just press it again to turn it off. It's pretty self explanatory. Here you can get out. There's like a little, I don't know if you can call that room there. Um, yeah. Uh... <laughs> So we can take a fly around. Actually, let me uh, sleep really quick first before we do that because it's quite dark. And yeah, you can see this thing in its full beauty. So the crafter, first item type of motor, our bulk, our accessible bulk loaders. Our chest hall, unstackable sorting, multi item sorting, and overflow, of course. Overflow is pretty cool, actually. It's just uh, two six times uh, hyper speed shulker loaders, and they just load the shulker boxes directly up with anything. And when they're either full or this little timer resets, uh, it'll break the boxes and send them to the overflow, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, chunk loading. That is one of the things that took, I think, the longest time to get correct. So we're going to go up top here so we can see this is instant wire. This turns on whenever anything detects that it's on. Right now it's off, obviously, but we do have some lightning rods up here for lightning strikes. But we have this clock. Some instant wire budding stuff, not too sure why this is so complicated, uh, but I guess it just makes it more reliable or whatever. Oh yeah, it does. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, just, they're pumpkin chunk letters, so they abuse the two snow blocks. You can just kind of place a pumpkin with a dispenser, and then it shoots it off, and yeah, it collects it. It's pretty cool. Uh, I can actually get this running. It does take a minute to get running, I think, because I have to manually do it, actually. Okay, we're going to do that. So to do that, i going to come out here, come up, and just give this piston a little update with... I'm not too sure how I want to do this exactly. Uh, we'll just remove the rail. And that will update the entire thing and turn the clock on. 
the clock is, I forget exactly how long it is, it's a little bit shorter than it needs to be, or a little bit faster, sorry, just in case uh, the whole thing breaks, or it goes down in tears. Go up here. We'll see the pumpkin get thrown away and then comes back. Pretty nice. All of it's instant wire, so it's all instant. That was the most painful part, I think, for Graham at least. Um, these two just load those two halt because I kind of forgot about them in the original schematic, but whatever. It loads a lot of area, so this means that we can basically just build around this uh, the storage, and we'll still have. Uh, the stuff working. Let's check out the nether side of that. It's actually pretty cool. It's a little messy just because it was kind of built last minute, but I think it's kind of cool. Um, so when you come out of the portal, there's actually lights around the portal that tell you if it's on. We probably don't need that many. I'm probably going to change it. Um, but yeah, you can see the chunk loaders up here. They're not too far away, which is nice. Um, and this is actually a pretty integrated thing. Uh, it doesn't. It, it looks way more complicated than it actually is. It's just a lot to do. Um, so all these lights uh, indicate a chunk letter, and the status of the light is usually on. But if you turn it off, that's going to turn all the lights off, and we should see here the next time that our chunk letters get chunk get loaded, we'll see. Pardon. Uh, we'll get the all the lights turning on. There we go. And because all the lights turn on, there's like a little uh, latch latch gate that only lets the indicator lights turn on if every single one of the uh, chunk loaders is working, and here we also have a reset, so that'll just, when they're on here, we'll see in a minute. Yep, so when they're on, you can just default them to off. And then we just have this little thing, and then that sends a signal down here to the little indicator things. These are definitely going to be improved. This is just very last minute, as I said. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool, uh, I think. We are going to have a uh, nether hub here, so these chunk cutters might have to end up getting moved, but I don't know because the, the nether hub is going to basically, we're going to have a big hole in the bedrock here, and it's going to be kind of half under the nether and half above the nether, which is pretty nice, um, but yeah, we'll still take quite some time. I believe someone was starting to make a nether perimeter somewhere, but I'm not too sure where. Um, yeah, there are some more, um, like, stuff that's obviously been added. You can see all the portals. Um, but I'm going to be showing that in a later video, maybe, like, a tour or something uh, with all the members, just because, uh, it's, yeah, it's a lot. And we, we have way more to go. Um, but, yeah, you know, I think it's pretty cool. Um, one thing I didn't actually explain about the input, this is for coming the nerds, um, People had questions about the buffer and why we needed it. So basically all the buffer does is when you put any items into the storage, you don't want it to just kick on and start working storage at full speed. So say you drop in, you know, 1600 blocks of white concrete, you don't want it to just go directly into the unloader and start unloading it and then turn on trunk loading because that takes server performance and we don't really want to take that away. Say if there's something else running, you can choose to have it on or off. Obviously, you could just pause the unloader and use that, but it's way easier to have a buffer and then just send the items through when you want. That's what this button does here. When you press that, anything that's in the buffer will just get sent out to um, the unloader. I don't think there was anything in there. No, there wasn't, but yeah. It's very complicated. It's a lot less logic than I was last time when I built one which was very bad, um, but it's it's still a decent a decent amount of logic, I'd say. Uh, and obviously, the first item type of loader, set-based parallel and loader, whatever you want to call it, um, by Glotz, Boyan, those guys. Um, very nice. Um, the perimeter, this is our first perimeter, so obviously it's not perfect. Uh, where can we go? Here, I think... Yes, yeah, so here you can see the TNT thick walls, or the trenches, and then we did the world eater, world eater finished, and then we got a wall placer, place all the blocks in a big square, and it's pretty cool. 
And the wall, Savior made the wall. He just took a picture of literally like someone's bath bathroom floor and put it into a map art creator and just sized it up to what we needed. And I think it looks really, really good, especially especially on the world map. Oh, don't I think I just loaded my shaders or something. Yeah, uh, the world map is super cool. Uh, yeah, you can see their whole world, how it's kind of all expanded. I don't have too many overworld uh, waypoints now that I look at it. Uh, it's our concrete farm that I showed in the last episode, I believe. Was it the last episode? That is the concrete. Uh, yes, that is. Uh, there's a ton of stuff over here. but Yeah, this is the main part that we're focusing on is the storage. Soon we are going to have a spawn perimeter. The spawn perimeter, that's the spawn point, so it's going to go about right here. It's a little bit into this ocean. shouldn't be too big of a problem, but it's going to be a lot of work. And we haven't really prepared for that yet. Uh, we might end up also making spawn into quadrant quadrants. So we'll have this be one spawn size perimeter, and then this another so spawn size perimeter, and then this here another spawn size perimeter, and then this another spawn size perimeter. So this whole area will be empty. Um, maybe this will be where we put our furnace array, uh, other stuff I'm not too sure of yet. But it, it could be pretty cool. It would be a lot of work, but it would be really, really satisfying to have it all finished. And there are my shaders. Uh, didn't really want that on right now, but yeah. Uh, I'm not leaving schematics anything in the description. I'm going to leave a link to the Discord. That's a pretty new server, so please, you know, it's only been up for a month and a half, a month, two months maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, feel free, come on, join. We always need new members. Um, I guess I could show the creative server with the uh, storage on it, so let me do that. Okay, so this is the creative server. Um, you can see pretty much everything's almost identical. A little bit less decoration. There's some messing around with glow like farms and such. I don't know who put that there, but yeah. Uh, yeah, you can see everything. Obviously, no item assignment in creative. Ton of builds. Ton of builds. I don't know why there's 7,000 multi items just there, but okay. Um, yeah, there's tons of cool stuff here. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're interested in checking out the storage, feel free to join the Discord. Uh, you can apply for member. Uh, there's an application thing you can fill out. It's a Google form. Um, besides that, though, I don't think there's too much else. Um, if you want to know anything about the server, you can check uh, hashtag server info in the Discord, or you can just uh, you know DM me, ping me, whatever. I don't care. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's anything else to it. This is storage. It's pretty cool storage. Uh, if you have any questions about it, leave them in the comment section. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.